All right, so I don't know if any of you have traveled before, but traveling to Japan with my favorite place I've been to, Japan is a completely different culture, different people, different foods. And so today, I want to describe for you the most interesting place that I visited in Tokyo, Japan. One of the first places I visited was the Miji Shrine. So this is the main building of the shrine where people come up and you pay your respects, and you pay your tribute right there. Um, you do like a little ritual type thing, and then you throw a coin in, into the, uh, the fountain. So this shrine is dedicated to Emperor Miji and his wife, Emperor Shokin, in 1920. It was destroyed during World War II, but it was rebuilt soon after just to make it look right alike. At the entrance of the Miji Shrine stands the massive Tori Gate. And after you pass through that gate, you can see the thick forest. There, were about, there are about 100,000 trees in the forest, and each, each tree was, was donated from different parts of Japan. And as you walk through the tree, through, through the gate in, in between the trees, it, uh, the Miji Shrine is in the middle of the city. And it's crazy because as you walk through it, you can't hear any more city life. It just sounds like you're in a forest in the middle of nowhere. So it's a pretty cool part. And as you walk past the gate towards the main building, you're going to pass these barrels of sake. Um, these barrels were donated from brewers from all over Japan. And they're donated in honor of the enshrined god there. And people paint. I'll pay on top of the barrels and donate them, so the cool part. Another place I visited was the, uh, the Tokyo Tower. So that, this is the tower in the background. So this tower was constructed as a symbol of Japan's post-World post War II economic prosperity. It's actually taller than the Eiffel Tower, which is modeled after. As you can see, it looks pretty similar. And the tower actually served as a broadcast antenna as well. So the top deck is 250 meters high. So this is actually a view that I took. So you can see it's pretty high up. And the whole Tokyo Tower, the, the top deck, is 360, so you can walk around the whole thing and look at the whole city. You can, and when the sky is clear, you can actually see Mount Fuji. Not from this angle, but from this angle, you can see Mount Fuji in the background, so that's pretty cool. Also in the, in the, uh, the, one piece, in the uh, Tokyo Tower is the One Piece Tower. So this is a, a kind of attraction in the, in the middle of the tower dedicated to this one like anime slash manga One Piece. And it opened in 2015, which is 15 years after the original release of the, uh, of the show. So I'm a big fan, so I have to visit myself. <laughs> Next, I also visited uh, the, the Shibuya Crossing. So the crossing is actually the, busy, the busiest pedestrian crossing in the world. Thousands of people crossed at five different locations at one time. So chaos ensues, and it's pretty fun to watch, like people scrambling and stuff. At the crossing is the Hachiko statue. So Hachiko was a dog in the 1920s, would meet his master every day at the train station, which is located right next to the crossing. Um, one, one day, the master went on the train, and he died. And so he, didn't, he never came back on the train, but the dog would wait every day at the, at the spot where the statue is until the dog died, and so people thought of the hot warming story and they built a statue there in honor of the dog which is right next to the crossing so it's, as you pass the statue you're going to walk around to the, the Shibuya crossing and I have a video here See, that's Yes, yeah, so that's based, that's what it is. Um, also, at the uh, at the uh, the crossing, people do there's been like recorded events of like funny and strange events, like random celebrities will sometimes appear there. Um, there'll be illegal concerts, like not obviously big festivals, but bands will set up and just start playing. Um, there'll be different type of stunts, and so it just shows that this crossing is more than just an intersection; it's part of the culture there. And so yeah, so basically, if I talk about how, how cool Japan is, if you ever get the chance, you should definitely go visit. And yeah, thank you, thank you for taking the time to listen.
All right, Kayla, what did you think? Um, I really liked the topic. I think it's interesting people travel to new places and want to share it with everyone else. Um, I do think that your opening was a little, um, I think you could have had a better opening, just like a smoother transition. <coughs> um, but I like how you gave us like the history of like, you know, the attractions you went to. Um, and I liked how there wasn't like too much information on the slides, like you just had like little bullet points and you like explained like what you were talking about. Um, and I liked the pictures. I really liked the video, that was cool, like gave us a visual of like what you were talking about. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, I'm going to agree with her about the introduction. Your attention device needs to be a little bit more elaborate and engaging, but you are very clear about what your purpose is. It sounds uh, a little bit more personal, and I think you need to create a broader justification for that. Why are these, you, know, you, you just mentioned the three things that you like the most. Why, why did you pick those three things? Why are they the things that we ought to know about? I think you need to give us a little bit more justification for that. Um, you told us what your purpose statement was, but you didn't tell us what those things were going to be. What were those three things at the beginning of the speech? So there's no preview of what the supporting structure is going to be. I'm just, I'm just discovering them as they come up during the presentation. And you want to give your audience kind of a heads up about what's happening so they know what to look for or, or know when something's going to be done, that the, that the next thing is coming along. And you don't really have the, that sort of thing, so there's, it, it's kind of abrupt. I mentioned... Uh, earlier in Danny's speech that some things are a little bit mechanical, you're doing the same sort of thing. I can see that you're saying, I need to have a structure, here are my three parts, this is the first part, the second part, the third part, and you're going through the, through the steps in doing that, but it needs to flow a little bit more smoothly, and that's why you need to have those transitions um, uh, that would be a little more effective. Uh, the supporting material, it's, it's really dependent upon your knowledge here. You find a, a little bit of information, especially a, at the temple, I think that that's where you've got the, the most kind of information, historical information, context. I think you needed more of that on each of the points. Um, the, the one crossing that you mentioned there at the end, uh, I can see, I, I couldn't see at first, I didn't know what the hell you were talking about at first, until the video showed up and said, I mean, you talk about Hakachi. I've heard of that story, that sort of thing before. I'm going, but what is this place that you're talking about? And it's not until you show the video that I go, okay, now I understand why it would be important. This is an important crossroads, lots of people there. And you, like you said, there's a cult, it's kind of a cultural center. Why is it a cultural center? Is it just because there are a lot of people there? Is it because of the shopping area and the, in the, in the surrounding uh, points there? Is it because it's, a, it's, it's where there's a confluence of transportation corridors or something along those lines? I, I could use a little bit more context and information for it. It's not that what you're talking about is uninteresting, it is interesting, I'm just wondering, well, why is this the thing that we're looking at instead of a dozen other places where they might have similar kinds of things? There's probably a reason that there is there, and, and you need to get more of that into your presentation. Uh, I thought that I liked the video a lot, I just think it needed to come at the beginning of the section rather than at the end of the section. At the end of the section, it's like, okay, that kind of explains what's going on here. If it came at the beginning, then it would make more sense, and then the story about the dog would, could follow that pretty easily. Um, I, I think I could have used uh, one more picture of the forest, you know, once you got past the gates on that first one, you know, or the second one, I guess it was, that, that you know, so you, you could say, you were actually in the middle of a city of, you know, 20 million people, but you wouldn't know it because look around you and, you know, here's the picture of the forest and, it's, you know, that kind of thing. You know, it, it, I think it would give us more of a sense of what we're talking about. What we do is we look through the gate and there's a bunch of trees on the other side of the gate. And I don't think that gives you the effect that you say exists when you were there. 
So what would do that, maybe something on the inside uh, a little bit more. Um, I think you do a nice job speaking to the audience. You, you know what you want to say. You're talking to us about those things. You're engaged. You're interested in talking about it. That, that always comes across, and that's very helpful. Um, so it, you had more time, so there was more time to do some of the things that I'm talking about. It wouldn't be that hard for you to expand this speech and make it work a little better. Uh, we don't want it just to be a travel log of, of your trip, but uh, you know, why these are things that are important and interesting, we've got to get a little bit more on that. The temple, you got a little bit of that at the beginning, and uh, this, like I said, the third one, I, I, did, I understood finally what was going on, but I, I think it needs to be... Like when you mentioned the cultural events and you know, those kinds of things, maybe you could compare it to a place in uh, the world that we might be familiar with, like Times Square, or you know, some place not too far from here, you know, right. like like the Vegas Strip or something like that. That people say, you know, what's the equivalent of the United States where you would do something like this? Well, you know, Times Square is where everything comes together in Manhattan, and you've got the confluence of these kinds of events. This is sort of that spot in right. in that location, and then it would be a little bit easier to know why we were talking about it. All right, thank you.